Hi friends, welcome back to Sabir CAD. Hope you are all doing fine. In this tutorial video, I will explain the procedure to perform landscaping of a double storied 3D house. But before exploring this video, I recommend you to go through the previous tutorials of this tutorial series of modeling a double storied house using AutoCAD. I have provided links at the upper right corner of this video as well as at the description section to access the previous videos. And while you create a landscape of this double story 3D house, you will learn a number of useful modeling techniques in AutoCAD. But before we move on, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get instant alerts. We will create a plane to indicate the land. Then we will create a pathway, then the borders for the pathway. We will make a compound wall. Then we will make uh, the planter boxes. Then we will also create a lawn mount over here. Since the porch is in a lower level, we will create a level difference for this pathway in the porch area. So let's get started. Let's start by creating a plane which actually indicate the land. So before you do that, we should ensure that the 3D land layer is a current layer. If it is not current layer, you should activate that as a current layer. Okay, next I'll go to a rectangle command. Then I'll click my first corner here. Then I'll go to dimension option. Then I'll give the length of rectangle as 3300. That is 33 meters. Then the width of the rectangle is 4200. That is 42 meters. Okay, then I'll click to define the opposite corner point here. Next, I'll position this rectangle with respect to this house. So I'll go to plan view. Then I'll give a move command. Then I'll select the land. And I'll choose this as a base point. Then you can disable the ortho if it is on. And you can also turn off the O snap. Then I'll keep it like this. Okay, so that you will get maximum frontage then almost equal amount of spaces on the left as well as on the right side. So you should position the rectangle accordingly. And now you need only a small area in the backyard. Okay. Now I'll go to Southeast isometric view. Then I'll make a region by giving a region command to get a surface out of this boundary. Because when you go for a shaded mode. Okay. Now there is no surface over here. But if you give a region command. And if you select this boundary, AutoCAD fills this boundary with a surface. Okay, so this is the land. Now when you analyze the porch area of this completed model, you can see that the porch is situated at a lower level. That is at a distance of 45 centimeter below the ground level. So we have to remove certain area from the land. Okay, and this particular edge corresponds to the lower edge of the porch and this particular edge corresponds to this edge of the sit out so i'll create such a rectangle first so i'll create a polyline i'll start from a point so i'll go to polyline command and i have to choose a point corresponding to this as well as uh, this so you can just track to get that point here okay like this or else you can use point filters so then i'll click to define this point then i need another point corresponding to uh, this point over here so I'll use point filters to get that point. So I'll go to point filters dot x off this point or this point you can select and dot y off this point. So you've got it. So I'll again use point filters dot x off this point and what dot y off this one. And you can just give a close. Then I'll give a region. Next, I'll give a subtraction command. So I'll go to subtract or else you can type the letter SU. This is the first object, give an enter, select the second object, give an enter. Now when you shade it, you can see that you have removed that area. Next, I'll create the porch side wall, which you see here, as well as the porch floor. The porch floor is actually in two levels. First of all, I'll create this plane, which is at a distance of 45 centimeter down below the ground level. And I'll also create a slope like this. So from this ground level, you can reach on to this level through the slope. Okay. So first of all, I'll create this a side face of the porch. Over here, I have already created a layer called 3D port side face. Okay. 
So you should create this layer if you haven't created it. Then I have made that as a current layer. Next, I'll align the UCS with the right face. So I'll go to Visualize tab, then I'll select right. Then I'll draw a polyline. Okay, I'll go to Home tab and select polyline. And from this endpoint, I'll create a polyline straight down through a distance of 45 centimeter. Then I'll come all the way up till this point. Then I'll define a point corresponding to this as well as this point. So I'll get this point here. Okay. Or else you can use point filter to define this. Then I'll come back to this point. Then I'll give a right click and close. So this profile is created. Next, I'll give a region command to create a surface on this profile. Then I'll select this profile. Next, I'll copy this profile onto this side. So I'll go to copy command, select this profile. This is a base point and this is a second point. Next, I have to create another face to indicate the porch floor. So I'll create a polyline. I'll go to polyline. I'll select these endpoints. I'll give an offset command. I give an offset distance of one centimeter. Select object to offset, side to offset. Okay, it is offsetted. Next, I'll make it a close profile to extrude it. So another polyline. Then extend towards this edge, this line. Then I'll give a trim. Then I'll connect these two endpoints as well using another polyline. Next, I can go for a join. I'll select this polyline, these two, as well as the one over here. Okay, now it's a single profile. Now this profile I'm going to extrude again by using the extrude command. When I master specify the height, I can just pick a point over here on this side so that this distance will be taken as a height. Okay. Now this face, I'm going to move on to the porch floor layer because that, that particular face should be given a different material later. So porch floor layer, it is taken to. Next, when you shade it, you can see that you have to create one more face over here and this area remains opened. So we have to cover this area. So I'll align the users with the front face. So I'll go to visualize tab. Then I'll select front since that being the front face. Then I'll go to polyline again. And I'll pick these endpoints and give a close. Next, I'll give a region command. And I'll choose L for the last drawn object. Okay, that area is covered. Now, let's shade it. Okay, so we have created the required phases and the level difference for the post floor. Next, we have to create a pathway that actually leads to the post floor. Now I'll go for two viewport configuration to see uh, the pathway in the top as well as in the 3D viewports. So I'll click over here and viewport configuration list. I'll choose two vertical. I'll activate this viewport and I'll go to a plan view here or a top view. Next, I'll change the display representation to wireframe. Next, I'll align the UCS with the base. So I'll go to visualize tab and I'll take the UCS to the world. Then I'll draw a polyline. I'll start from here. Then I'll activate this viewport and I'll come all the way up till this perpendicular. Next, I should pick a point corresponding to this point over here. So I'll just track it. I've got it. Now you can just come back to this point and give a close. Okay, you've got that point. Next, when you switch over to the actual file, you can see that the pathway is also extended towards the sit out area. So we have to create this extension as well. So what I'll do is I'll draw another polyline starting from this endpoint to this perpendicular. Okay, then I'll copy this polyline through a distance of say 380. Next, I have to connect these two endpoints using polylines. Next, I'll make a fillet over here to smoothen this particular corner. So I'll go to fillet. And then I'll give a radius. I'll just pick two points to specify the radius. The distance between these two points will be taken as a radius. It's an approximate radius I give. Okay, and then I'll pick a point over here. Now you can see that you have made a curve. Next, we have to join all this into a single profile so that it can be readily extruded. So I'll go to join option. 
and I'll select this edge, this one, as well as this particular edge. So let's just check whether it's closed. For that, you have to give a pre-edit command. For that, I'll go to modify and I'll click on edit polyline option and I'll select this polyline. Now the first option is close, which means that this is an open polyline. So just click on close option to close it. Okay. It's a closed profile. It can be readily extruded. So I'll give extrude again. Then I'll select this. Height of extrusion is one centimeter, the same as the height of extrusion which was given earlier for this particular phase. Okay, so we have created a pathway. Next, we have to create a border around this pathway, just as you see here. The width of this border is 10 centimeter and the height of this border is 10 centimeter. So let's make such a border. I have created a layer called a 3D molding. I'll keep this layer as the current layer. Now I'll draw a polyline starting from this end point. The next point I'll pick here at this end point. Next point I'll pick right here. Okay, next I'll give an offset command. An offset distance of 10. Select object to offset, side to offset. Then I'll connect these two endpoints with a straight line. Then even these two points I'll join. Next, I'll go for a join command and I'll convert this into a single profile. I'll change the visual style to wireframe. Then I'll go to modify tab, go to join command. I'll select this segment as well as these two segments and the last one which I have created over here. Okay, now it's a single profile. Next, you can extrude this. So I'll go to extrude and select this profile and I'll give a height of extrusion of 10. Okay, so we have made the border here. Next, I'll repeat the same sequence of steps to create the border on the other side. So polyline first. Now go to arc option. Then I'll go to second point option to trace this midpoint as well as to this end point. Now we'll just come back to line mode by right clicking. Then I'll come to this end point as well as I'll click this end point. Next, I'll give offset. Offset distance of 10 is there already. Now select object to offset and side to offset. Next, I'll go to polyline. I'll select these two endpoints as well as these two endpoints. Now go to join. Select this profile as well as this and the one which is here. Now you can lower this profile slightly towards this level, which is the ground level. Now it is on the top plane of the pathway. So I'll go to move command, select this base point and second point. Next I'll give extrude and select this profile and I'll give a height of extrusion of 10. Now we have created the border for the pathway. I'll change the visual style to realistic. You can take a look. Next, I'll create a lawn mount in this area. In fact, this surface which you see here is called a network surface in AutoCAD. Let's switch over to wireframe and take a look. So this is how it will appear. In order to create the surface, we have to define four edges. So I'll create an edge like this, then second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. So let's create the surface. To start with, I'll align the UCS with the right face. So I'll go to visualize tab and I'll choose a right from here. Next, I'll use a polyline to create the first edge. So I'll go to home tab and I'll select polyline and I'll start from here. Then I'll go to arc option, right click and select arc. Then you choose a second point. I'll pick uh, my second point here. So I'll go to right click second point. I'll choose the second point here. Then uh, next point I'll pick here. Again, I'll pick the next point here. And one more point I'll pick here. You can also perform grip editing if required just to change the curvature of the arc to the required degree like this. So this is my first curve. Draw the next one. That is nothing but a line which is here. So I'll use another polyline to draw a line from this endpoint to this endpoint. Next I'll align the UCS to the front face. So I'll go to visualize tab and I'll choose friend. Then I'll go to polyline. Then I'll start a polyline exactly from this endpoint. 
Then I'll go to arc and I'll pick the end point of the arc here. The next point I'll pick here and the next end point I'll pick here. Next I'll draw one more line connecting these two end points. So I'll go to polyline and uh, which starts from this end point to this end point. So I have four adjoining edges which are having end to end contact. Now I'll go to wireframe. Then I'll choose a network to create a network surface. It will ask you to select the curve or surface edge in the first direction, then curve or surface edge in the second direction, then curve or surface in the second direction and the second curve in the second direction. Now just give an enter. The moment you give an enter, it automatically creates a surface here. Now we can go for a shaded representation and take a look. This is how it will appear. Now I'll change the layer of this particular object to 3D landscape layer. Speciality of the surface is that it has got undulations and such type of surfaces can be commonly used in landscaping. Next I'll create the compound wall around this house. I won't create the compound wall in front because we will be keeping the camera over here to capture the view. So even if I create a compound wall here that is not going to be seen. We are already familiar with the creation of a compound wall. Please go through the video on making compound walls if you need any clarifications on this. I already have a compound wall created and it is saved as a separate drawing. Now what I'll do is I'll switch over to the 3D file and I'll insert that compound wall here. Now I'll go to insert tab and I'll click on insert more options. Now when I look at the block table area you can see that you don't have a block with the name of a compound wall. Okay now what I'll do is I'll go to browse option and I'll select that particular compound wall drawing which was saved beforehand. Okay and I'll just give open and I'll give OK. Now you can see the compound wall but the orientation of the compound wall is not the required orientation. Anyway I'll just insert it here. Now I'll erase this compound wall because you know that the moment I insert a compound wall I have created a block definition in my drawing. Please refer my video on the best method to handle with repeatability in my channel to get a better understanding of what block definitions are. I have already provided a link below this video. Now I'll align the UCS with the base because I want to create a compound wall all along this boundary of the land. So I'll go to visualize tab then I'll go to the world option of UCS. Now UCS is taken to the world. Now I'll create a polyline okay just to show the direction in which I want the compound walls to be inserted. Now I'll just take perpendicular and I'll pick a point over here. So I've got a point right here. Now one more point over here and here. Next I'll go to measure command. So I'll type measure using the keyboard. Now I'm asked to select the object to measure. I'll select this particular object, the polyline. Now before selecting the polyline, you have to activate the selection cycling in AutoCAD. Because when you activate the selection cycling and when you click on an area where more than one object is existing, just as you see here, you will get a selection dialog using which you can select the required object. Now I want to select the polyline, not the region. I have selected the polyline. Now it will ask you for the length of a segment. But since I already have a block, I will just go to block option. Now it will ask you to give the name of the block that is to be inserted. And the name of the block is C wall. Okay, compound wall. Now it will ask you whether you want to align the compound wall. Yes. Now it will ask you for a length of a segment. Length of a segment is nothing but the length of a compound wall segment which is 300. I will give that value. The moment you give it, you will see the compound wall getting created all along. But you have to make a small correction over here because here this compound wall is to be rotated. Okay, or else you can just erase this compound wall and I can take a copy of this existing one. Okay, and this is the base point and the second point is at a distance of 300. Such minor corrections need to be done. And uh, from here one compound wall segment can be erased. Over here you need to take a copy of this existing wall. Okay, so this is a typical use of the block option in the measure command. So measure command as you know is used to divide an object into a number of segments having predefined length. But this measure command has got a block option using which you can insert a particular block repetitively along a predefined profile. That's exactly what you have done here. And how is this block created? The block of this compound wall is created when you have inserted the compound wall drawing using the browse option. 
and the moment you insert that particular drawing into the current drawing AutoCAD automatically creates a block definition uh, in the current drawing let's check that out so I'll go to insert command and I'll go to insert button now you can see the presence of this compound wall block this definition can be inserted from now onwards any number of times simply by clicking here next we will create the planter boxes which you see here for that I'll start with the rectangle first so I'll click on rectangle I'll click to define the first corner then I'll go to dimension option length of the rectangle I'll give 45 and width of the rectangle I'll give 120 then I'll click to define the opposite corner point next I'll give an offset command to offset it 5 unit outward then I'll give a press pull to extrude in between area okay so you know that press pull is nothing but an extrusion and subtraction so I'll click on press pull and I'll click over here in between area then I'll give a height of extrusion of 45 next I'll keep this object into the 3d wall grew layer because I want to give the same material for the wall grew as well as for the planter bed so I'll just click on that next I have to create a beading work over here so I'll activate the 3d molding layer as a current layer because I want the beading to be kept in this layer and the beading will be given white color now I'll align the users with the front face so I'll go to visualize and select front next I'll draw a profile using a polyline so I'll go to polyline and I'll start from here I'll give 6 then 3 3 3 3 and close next I'll draw a path along which this can be extruded but before you draw the path you have to align the UCS with the world so I'll go to visualize and world now go to polyline to draw the path 1 2 3 4 and you can just give a close next you can go for an extrude this is the profile to be extruded now go to path option and just type L which stands for last to select the most recently drawn path so we have created a planter bed now we can take a repeated copies of the same planter bed to complete it so I'll go to move command and I'll select this and this is the base point and this end point I'll choose as a second point next I'll switch over to the plan view okay after changing the visual style to wireframe it's a top view you can generate as many copies as you want using the copy command so I'll go to copy this is the base point then second point you can maintain equal distance between the individual planter beds now I'll go for mirror because I need the same mirror image on the other side and I'll select all this this is the first point on the mirror line next point on the mirror line I need few more items to be copied here so I'll go to copy and this is the object to be copied and I'll click the second point here to get a copy of it this is how you make the planter bed next I'll generate a view of this entire 3d house now some correction need to be done over here for the compound wall so I'll just erase this and I'll take a copy of the compound wall here 300 is the length next we will create a view of this 3d house a perspective view let's generate a two-point perspective please refer my video on generating perspective if you want to get a clear-cut idea about creating perspectives in AutoCAD using dView or dynamic viewing command anyway I presume that you have already gone through that video then I'll go to plan view then I'll give dView command and I'll select the object to be visualized I'll select the entire object I'll go to points option to define the target point and camera points to view the object so when I'm asked to give the target point I'll define the target using point filters I want the target to be elevated through a distance of 250 centimeter from the XY plane so I'll click on dot XY off I'll pick a point over here when I'm asked to give the Z coordinate I'll give 250 similarly I can also define the camera so what I'll do is when I'm asked to give the camera I'll go to shift right click point filters dot XY off I'll pick a point over here okay so only the X and Y coordinate of that point is selected now when I'm asked to give Z I can give 250 okay this is the line of sight or view direction now you just go to distance option and just give an enter to get a perspective view okay this is a perfect perspective view 
Now you can definitely change the focal length of the camera or else it just give an enter to go out of this command. Now you can go for a realistic shaded representation. Now what you can do is just scroll the mouse to move the camera backwards. Okay. Now I'll just scroll a little bit to move the camera forward. You can just pan it all over the camera. You can scroll slightly to move the camera towards the target. Okay, so I'll use a scroll wheel to position the camera slightly ahead. So this is how you make a perspective. Now we have completed the 3D modeling part of the double storied 3D house. I hope the entire set of video has given you some vital information and valuable concepts related with architectural modeling using AutoCAD software. Thank you very much for your patience and time and I wish you the very best. I have provided the links to download the completed 3D file of this double storied residence at the description section. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button of this video if you liked it. Until I catch you in the next video with another interesting topic. Bye bye and take care. May God bless you all.